Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Peter. I'm a founder and CEO of Wavcaring. I want to share with you this morning, I woke up to the news that the European Space Agency's solar orbiter uh, have actually taken the closest picture uh, of the sun, the closest, gotten closer to the sun than any other human being or any other man-made object have done. It's gotten to 77 million kilometers uh, to to the sun's surface is taking a really high resolu resolution and detailed picture uh, of the sun, of our own star. And I was so excited about, a, about the news. And then I kept on reading. Well, the sun, by the way, just to give you an idea of how far it is, the sun is so far that it takes eight minutes for the light to reach from the star to reach the earth itself. Eight minutes traveling at the speed of light. That's how far our own star is in this vast space. So to get that close, halfway to the sun, to have traveled four light minutes to get to the sun and taken a picture. I mean, I can't wait to see this picture. And I keep on reading it and reading it. And then the, and the article says, well, the photo won't get here until July 15th. Oh, I was so disappointed. July 15th, that's like more than a month away. I don't remember the last time I had to, you know, wait this long to look at the face. It's slower than Kodak, right? <laughs> when I was younger, you used to be able to take a photo, you know, from your film camera and then drive to Kodak and they will deliver within, you know, a day or pick up within a day. Or, and then, uh, you know, if you really wanted a photo quick, you can, you know, pay for the extra service to have it delivered within an hour, right? I can't imagine waiting for this long. But you know, that also reminded me of the story of Kodak, of Eastman Kodak as a company. Eastman Kodak was actually established in 1980. Uh, in the 1930s, it was listed on a New York, uh, on a Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average, and it stayed there for 74 years. And Dow Jones 30, uh, if you know, is the 30th largest company here in America. To stay for, you know, on that index for that long is a recognition of the growth and the contribution and the momentum that this company has. In 1962, Kodak employed 75,000 people uh, with over $1 billion in the United States sales. 1970, that's in 1962 dollars in a huge company. In 1975, uh, Kodak actually invented the digital camera. In 1976, and 90% of all film sales, it dominated 90% of all of the films market, 85% of camera sales. Uh, its closest second competitor, Fuji Films, was way, way down, down the line. It was only about 10 to 15% market share. Now, we all know what happened to Kodak. Right? Uh, in 2004, it got delisted from Dow Jones uh, 30. In 2010, really, it fell out of the S&P 500. It wasn't even the 500 largest company anymore. And in 2012, it actually filed for bank <clears throat> chapter 11 bankruptcy. Investing in one single company carries tremendous amount of risk. If the company loses money or goes out of business, that means your entire investment to the company goes down the drain with it. Now, it's easy for people to say, well, I mean, Kodak is not doing well. You know, anybody could have seen it coming, or I would have, you know, known better to not invest in a company like that. That's not actually what happened. What people didn't know is that Kodak did not just simply ignore the digital photography technology. Kodak actually, over the decades, invested over $2 billion to research in digital camera. In the 1990s, their digital camera was actually one of the top selling brands. Now, the digital camera that was first invented in 1976 was the size of a toaster oven. It was totally not usable. It required complex connection to a TV to use. The market wasn't mature. It wasn't mature for a digital camera back then. The other technology that are associated that's required to, for us, for the consumers to experience digital camera, it wasn't there to support it. So it wasn't feasible to actually develop on a technology. To, it wasn't marketable to develop on a technology. Now, there are many, many other things that contributed to Kodak's downfall. And at the time, if you're looking at it, it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't clear to any investor that th that was a company uh, that was not going to make it. So I hope the lesson that we learned today is that 
regardless how great a company is looking today, how big of an impact that they have in our community, how widespread their influence is, how big of a market share that they have, or how much money that they're making today, investing in single companies, investing in a handful of companies without true market diversification is a very risky practice and it's destructive to your financial wealth. This is Peter, and this has been Money Talks in Silicon Valley. See you next time.